Yes. Um, when Mine did too. you think, like, start? Because I was looking up, yeah. um, like, you know, character modeling is yeah. super cool. Because it like, is. A lot of um, people in the industry, like, they take the sculpt and zip up and they claw, like, re re it. Yeah. And they're like, oh man, yeah. it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. How you start, but like, yes, please go back. Yes. Um, it's be horrifying. So, to, to, to touch on your question, um, so yeah, so there's like kind of two workflows um, for character modeling, um, at least two that I'm familiar with. Um, and that is either like starting with orthographics and then just sort of, you know, modeling it pretty much what I'm going to do, where I start from a cube uh, and then just model a head. Um, and I'm just doing that like in Maya, like with topology or whatever. Um, the other thing is, like you mentioned, yeah, like you'll sculpt it in ZBrush and then just go into Maya and like redraw topology. Um, Flip Normals, if you guys um, on YouTube, super great channel. I'd actually recommend uh, looking at them for stuff. Um, but they actually do a really nice video about like the the retopology retopologizing tools in Maya. Um, it looks like they have sort of improved them a lot. But um, yeah, so. I prefer like starting from poly modeling and just working from a cube. Um, for grins, because I am a fan of cult movies and or have no imagination, um, who, not that it's going to look anything like any of these characters, but which Princess Bride character do you guys want me to model today? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, amazing. This is like the least expressive face that I could find. Most of the other ones, he was like screaming. Um, all right, so I'm just going to like set up a crappy little scene. And again, just for the record, this is not going to look anything like Vicini by the time that I'm done. Um, but it will vaguely resemble maybe a face that's been melted in a fire. Um, where am I going? Downloads. Um, all right. Beautiful. All right, cool. So we have Vicini in here. God, this is so low res. Um, all right, so actually for grins, I might set a timer just to like see how much I actually get done in 15 minutes. Um, so normally if you're working, so it's good to start with orthographics. In this case, I'm just going to kind of wing it. Um, it's good to start from orthographics. And then usually um, I'm going to say my rule of modeling like heads or most organic things is start with a square, don't start with a sphere. Um, so just as a, as a quick thing, um, so it is a lot easier, I think, to run. So this is like more or less the shape I'm going to start with for the head um, when I actually start modeling it. Um, but the nice thing about squares is if you need to run an edge, why do I keep doing that? Um, if you need to run an edge loop on it, you can see you can pretty much just add it. It's going to add one ring very predictably along like front to back on the object. Um, compare that to something like a sphere, where we have maybe make this like 12. Um, OK, so compared to the sphere, uh, I'm just going to throw in an edge loop on that. And you can see, so I mean, right now I have symmetry on, so it's adding two. Um, but it pretty much stops. And then it ends up just making like a weird quad appear. So then if I have to add in another loop, you can see it's going to shoot it. OK, what if I turn off symmetry for a minute? Um, it's going to sort of like keep shooting edge loops like progressively farther up your sphere. And then eventually it's going to reach a point where it like makes this weird pizza pie shape. Um, spheres are incredibly awkward to work with. So again, usually I would recommend actually starting from a cube and just sort of slowly turning it into a sphere. Um, the sort of simplest and or dumbest way to do that would just be uh, to, I have this, again, cube set up. Um, I'm just going to select all the vertices and do like an edit mesh average on those. And this is like a horrible way to make a sphere, but uh, you can see it's sort of making it more sphery. Um, the other thing that you can do is make a cube. And this is probably, so, there's a sphere, and then there's quad balls. A quad ball is basically, it'll end up being a sphere, but it starts with a cube. And if you go to mesh and smooth, um, you can see that this whole thing is basically just a mushed down cube. Um, 
where if I add, if I go in and I, you know, insert an edge loop tool, it's still adding pretty much one, one loop relatively predictably around uh, this little ball shape. And if I smooth it, it does actually pretty much end up becoming a sphere. Um, so quad balls are your friend, should you ever need to make quad balls. Um, doing this also helps avoid that weird, um, that like weird little pulling thing. So if, it, like, if I smooth um, the sphere versus the quad ball, I'll set this to like 12. Um, so the quad ball might be, might be kind of hard to see, but um, there's not going to be any particular pulling in any area of this because there's no stars. Um, you get like these little like corners, but these are fine. Um, compared to this, where you can, a lot of times, okay, not so much. Uh, I just rendered a little bit, but um, like a lot of times, if you start with something a sphere, like I can kind of see like there'll be a pulling in it. Um, so again, quad balls are nice if you're using stuff uh, for that. Um, so as far as I'm concerned, if you're starting from poly modeling, most times again you will start with a cube. Um, so at this point, I'm going to uh, heaven help me. Um, but I'm going to start a timer, and we're just going to see how much I get done in 15 minutes. Um, so feel free to stop me with questions. Oop, whoops, well, calculator. Um, but I'm just going to go over, like, over more or less like how I would sort of uh, start modeling a face. Um, all right, so the timer has been started. Again, heaven help me. Um, so I will start, as I mentioned before, with a cube. Um, in this case, a inconceivably giant cube. Haha. Uh -huh. Um, has anyone here actually seen Princess Bride? Like, if I make bad references, will anyone get it? Okay, perfect. Um, well, this makes me happy. Um, all right, so I'm just going to turn on my symmetry, and in this case, it seems like uh, object X is what I want. So I'm just going to grab this awkward cube. And also, for the record, um, I usually don't model heads in Maya, so this might just be like kind of a weird, uh, weird demo. But basically, I'm going to start off with turn off my grid because that is horrible to look at. Um, I'm going to start off with this weird cube, sort of just on this dude's head. And usually I'll start out with a single line going across his eyeballs. Um, the next thing I usually end up doing, just, just because, um, I don't want to turn off my image plane. I don't like image planes in my perspective camera. I find it super awkward, so I'm just going to get rid of them. Um, but I'm just going to grab my edges and sort of start turning this into something that resembles a little bit more of a cylinder, just because I think it's easier to... It's easier to shape things when you have less geometry compared to more. Um, but I'm just going to run in and throw in two edge loops. Um, one on the top of his eyes, one on the bottom of his eyes. Um, and then I will also do one sort of like in the center of his eye-ish area. Um, the goal here is to basically create a mask around his face. Um, so think of it kind of like a weird little raccoon mask. Um, so I'm just going to kind of shape these in a little bit. And again, you can see this is just sort of doing a little bit to go ahead and sort of define the eye shape. Um, so here we have eyes. They're beautiful, right? Creepy glasses. Um, at that point, um, usually what I would do for a face, um, and I say usually what I would do. This is like pretty much the method that uh, when I took organic modeling that um, uh, Dave Moriello, one of the other teachers here, um, taught me. So I'm just going to take that little eye patch thing and extrude it down. And you can see that now I have sort of like a weird, a little bit of like weird geometry. But um, basically, what you're shooting for at this point is if you you know click on this loop, uh, you see a solid ring of quads running around, basically around both eyes, kind of like a bandit mask or something like that, I guess. Um, so I'm just gonna go in and throw in two more edge loops because I do want. This is gonna sort of like trace out the side of his nose. Um, and also, I am just going to delete his eye holes. Huzzah! Um, it is a masterpiece, and is glorious, and everything is wonderful. Um, so here we have like this very awkward sort of uh, face starting to, starting to maybe come take shape a little bit, sort of. Um, so I'm just going to sort of shape these eye holes a little bit, maybe make these a little bit more round. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead, and I'm actually, so the other thing, Say again. <laughs> Tell me your pun. I must know. Oh my god, I did. That's amazing. Okay. Um, so usually it is good when you are. I love a good pun. Um, 
starting to do modeling stuff um, to actually go in and like define eyeballs. Um, because that way you can model around the actual shape of that eyeball and not need to worry about like, you know, making this whole super awesome face and being like, crap, it doesn't fit an eyeball at all. So in this case, um, you can see that the shape of my eyes doesn't really make sense of the eye, the eyeball itself, like at all. Um, so I'm just going to go in and I'm going to take um, take these weird like eye holes that I have, extrude them again, and I'm just grabbing the loops on the inside. And then I'm just going to go in and kind of shape these a little bit so they resemble something less terrifying. Um, and usually when you're doing um, like organic modeling for faces or something like that, um, you'll model the eyes like partially or fully closed. Um, and that's purely a thing for texture stretching. So if you, if you have to close the eyeball, um, or if you have to like close their eyelids, uh, if you model them open, it's going to cause a lot of texture stretching. But if you model them closed, they get more UV space. Um, so there's not going to be any stretching when you like close the eyeball. Um, so here I have these like super god awfully terrifying eye holes, um, and I'm just going to go through and kind of like shape these a little bit to uh, to this eyeball that I sort of roughed in here. Um, nothing terribly fancy, but you know it kind of fits the eye, I guess. Um, so now we have this, and I pulled these out, kind of crazy, because um, I, I don't like dealing with overlapping geometry. Call me lazy, whatever. It's not inaccurate. Um, and yeah, so I'm just kind of like shaping the nose, shaping the eyeballs, just kind of like going around reshaping stuff uh, in general a little bit um, to make this look slightly less horrifying. Um, so here we have again, kind of a face. Um, if I smooth it, it basically looks like a cube with eye holes in the start of a nose. Um, so at this point, I'm like, hey, it's kind of creepy. What if I put some kind of nose hole face or like nose hole flap in this? Um, so I'm just going to go in really quick. And again, with my insert edge loop tool, I will dump an edge loop right under that little eye mask. And then uh, this is where I usually start defining the, the mouth. Um, so I'm going to, same thing with the eyes. I'm going to take an edge loop and dump it right in between, or like right. Um, in the center of the lips. Um, I just scaled it flat because I like working with straight geometry. And at this point, I'm going to do something that's incredibly creepy looking. And I'm going to take uh, all of the faces, like pretty much, if I'm highlighting this, it looks like maybe where the like a hole in a mask might be or something. Um, this is like paper bag head hardcore right now. Um, but I'm just going to take these guys and extrude those faces. And ooh, hello. Um, that's not what I meant to do. Extrude those and scale them down. And this is my mouth. <laughs> um, it is beautiful. Um, this is like deranged tiki torch right now. Um, and I'm going to do a little bit the same thing that I did with the eyes, where I'm just going to grab these little verts here um, and just sort of force them down into something that maybe resembles more of an actual mouth shape instead of whatever the heck I, I actually just have. Um, and I'm also, like, while I'm here, I might go in and be like, what if I make this, sh this face the shape of an actual face instead of, like, a paper bag? Because um, it's super uncomfortable. Um, and this is just, like, goes for pretty much anything I do. But um, if you guys ever find that uh, your orthographics, like, in this case, this is totally not a straight on ideal, like, head size to be working. Oh, my god. Uh, to be working with. Yep. That's uh, something. Um, it is. It does look like Groot. Oh my god, I've made Groot, guys. Um, nothing, no head looks good when you first start it, just for the record. Um, so I'm just going to go in and just sort of like poke things around until it looks maybe more like an actual face. This is 100% Groot. So now we know that Groot has grown out of Vecini. Um, all right. Uh, so if I smooth this, it does like kind of look like a head, right? It's like it's like Voldemort and No Face had a baby. Um, this is also way more fun to make fun of than I realized it was going to be. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm just gonna again just sort of like keep pulling stuff around. Um, I'm gonna like push these little mouth flap hole things over um, so that they line up more with the edge of his mouth. Um, and a lot of so one of the goals, sort of, when you're making a face, is going to be. Um, and I could be wrong, but I'm fairly sure that like this, like the crease by the side of your mouth is called like the nasolabial fold or something oh. weird. 
um, this crease by the side of your mouth. I think it's called the nasolabial fold, but um, oh, yeah. every day. what? <laughs> this is called the philatrum, that like little hole between your nose and your mouth. I learned that from my high school planner. Um, anyway, um, but you need geometry defining all those things. So um, in this case, uh, this weird little like nasolabial fold is going to be defined. Um, you can see that this little edge loop here is more or less tracing it from his Voldemort nose. Um, where is my? There we go. Because um, I was going to like shove this stuff around, and I really I'm going to take like 10 seconds to like actually get this slightly more head shaped because this is horrifying. Um, I do also find that it is helpful to like start with teeth if you have them. Um, like if you have access to a set of teeth or even like fake teeth to just sort of throw them in. Um, it makes getting the mouth shape much easier. Um, but yeah. So again, like half of the thing with organic modeling really is just like tracing, um, effectively tracing geometry in with topology. So like anywhere you have a major fold, um, again, shoot an edge loop there. Um, that's more or less what I'm doing here. So um, at this point, I'm going to try to make this dude look a little bit more like a person and less like Groot Voldemort. Um, so I'll just start with the mouth. Um, so I'm going to go in and insert some edge loop tools. And I might throw, so if usually when I'll do the lips, I'll throw in like another edge loop and then just sort of use that to um, define the lip shape a little bit of the character. And then once I have the lip shape done, I'll sort of go in and like plump it out, I guess, a little bit, or like add add volume uh, to those lips. Um, in this case, I've done something very strange with the shape of the inside of his mouth. Um, cool. So he's kind of oh my god. So he's like smiling now. Great. Super creepy. Um, no character starts out looking nice when you first model them. Um, all right. He's appropriately sad now. Um, so at this point, I'm going to go in and usually, like, I'll just insert edge loop tools. What the heck? Um, so I found, like, this weird hack for mouths. Um, and that's basically, like, I'll just sort of throw an edge loop in here um, and then, like, pull out this lower lip. And the secret, in my experience, to getting a nicer looking, uh, like, area at the corner of the mouth is to pretty like be pretty aggressive about it, but, like, take... Um, so notice right now there's like a lot of edge loops sort of smashed into a single area. But if you take that edge loop that's like defining the very inner curve of his mouth, uh, I'm just going to open my camera and edit my clip planes really quick because this is very hard to look at. Yeah. All right. Um, so if you sort of take that like mouth and like really like push it in a little bit, like the corners of the mouth are going to kind of bend in. Um, but you can see, like, just by doing, just by adding that one extra loop, I do get something that's slightly more mouthy shaped, maybe. Um, so I'm just going to, why do I keep merging my whole thing together? Um, it's like my thing of the day. Um, so I'm just going to add in another loop. Um, and maybe, so like, you know, sort of push out the, the bottom lip a little bit more. Um, and you can see, like, the more stuff I do, um, the more that this is beginning to resemble a mouth. Um, it might also make sense to just, again, like, as I go, I usually just sort of check the overall head shape of my character. Um, just because it is, I think, a lot easier to modify when you have fewer loops compared to, you know, an entire head full of loops. Like, at one point for character modeling, for animation too, I think I made a character which had, like, 70 loops around the mouth, and pushing them by hand is an actual nightmare. Um, but yeah, so I'm just going to kind of call that like halfway decent for the for the mouth for now. Um, go back in and kind of work on the eyes maybe a little bit. Um, I can take this and be like, boop. Um, sad philatrum. Um, so uh, same thing kind of, um, first thing I think I want to do with the eyes is like add, give him like some actual eyebrows. So kind of the same thing for like under the nose. Um, I'm just going to add in like one more little loop here uh, right above that little eye mask. Um, and at which point I can actually take that, more or less, like, kind of grab these edge loops and, like, shove them out slightly. And now you have something that looks more like a mouth. Oh, my God. Um, 
So this is organic. When you're doing stuff like faces in particular, um, I really like switching axis orientation to component because it allows me to just like take this face and pull it basically straight out of the mesh. Um, what and like you know grab this vert and it's not really moving. It's just sort of like translating outward to like thicken the face without looking completely horrendous. If that makes sense. Um, I don't need to you know shift it back and forth. It pretty much just goes straight out from the face, and I don't need to worry about it. Um, all right, what else does he need? I guess a nose wouldn't be a horrible idea. Um, all right, so I'm actually maybe just gonna sort of drag these in. I was end up like pushing vertices around the mouth around like a crazy person. All right, so that's apparently been 14 minutes of modeling at this point. Um, so I'm just gonna run through and really quick see how much I can get done in like 30 seconds. Um, so again, I mentioned this nasal labial fold. I'm just gonna throw in another edge loop in there. Um, and once I push that in and push that in a little bit, um, you can see when I smooth that, you do get that nice creasing around the nose. Um, obviously the shape is horrible here, but, um, and then once you've done that, you can sort of go in and start like taking the nose and like dragging that out a little bit. Um, I'm just going to extrude this chunk of nose. Um, and now he's like a demon hell clown. Um, this is just uncomfortable. Um, and at this point, like, there's not a whole lot I can do to this nose like right now. Um, I can sort of grab this edge loop here and like maybe do something like this. Silence. All right, so that has officially been 15 minutes. Uh, this is apparently how much of a head I can get, in, get through in 15 minutes while also narrating <laughs> what I'm doing. So make of this what you will. Um, yeah, like, it's like totally not horrible for 15 minutes. Um, it's still creepy as all get out, but, um, and it's like, honestly, like most of it is just sort of shaping thing. Like, the, especially the eye area is like not terribly horrible to do. Um, and I think I might be wrong, but I think I made one of the extra credits, like try modeling a face. Um, try. yeah, do it. Um, but yeah, so I mean, like, if you guys wanted to, you know, like, try this for extra credit or whatever, you're welcome to. Um, I think, like I said, I think that's one of your assignments. But um, so, like, and pretty much with any organic modeling, like, you just want to be aware, like, when you're doing stuff, um, if there's like a hard crease at the corner of the eye, that's somewhere that you're going to want to add extra edge loops to get that hard crease. Um, same thing a little bit with. Um, is anybody sort of uh, interested in me continuing working on this head for a uh, to like demonstrate? Some like more organic modeling, or would you like to move on to something else? No, um, so I have uh, like the dagger thing, um, where I was gonna like show you guys how to do some random weapon stuff. Um, I could show you how to block in like a really, when I say really ugly, I mean like really ugly body, um, for like a like a character that you would design to be animated, um, and then uh, I also have some like rigging for modeling. Uh, that I can show you guys. So are there any preferences on what we spend time on? I think there also might be like some more classes coming up where I just sort of like have free time to go over some of this stuff, but like preferences for right now? I'm fine with the head, honestly. All right. Um, all right, so I'll do a little bit more work on the head um, just to like, I'll, I'll maybe like, you know, clean up the eyes a little bit and then maybe clean up the mouth um, and then just sort of maybe go on to other things. It's like kind of not completely horrendous from a pro profile. Um, so again, so normally when you're doing heads, um, it's not bad to, when you're doing anything, uh, to sort of check your orthographics from the side uh, as you're doing stuff, which I was not doing. Uh, and you'll notice that like the, the mouth was like maybe a little weird looking, so I'm just gonna kind of like drag his lips outwards um, and be like, oh, that looks better. That looks so much better. Um, she said with sarcasm. Um, but now he at least has like a little bit of a profile. Um, all right, so again, I'm just sort of like pushing stuff around. So like normally there's like a little dent between the eyebrows. Um, I get dent inwards. Um, and normally I'm just gonna kind of model him in like a generic, um, like not super excited position because that's normally what you would do with stuff like faces or eyeballs. Or like, if it's, it's, 
easier to rig a neutral position than it is to rig someone who's like screaming. Um, true story, I've tried to do that before, it sucks. Um, so normally, again, you'll just sort of model the character in like a bland expression. So um, I'm just going to go through and again, sort of like tweak the eyes a little bit. Um, so the first thing I'll do is usually once I have like the shape of the inside of his eye, I'll go in and just throw in another little edge loop um, fairly close to the first one. And I'll use that to define um, that. I don't know if it has a name, but it's like that little crease where you can sort of um, see the eyeball like under your face skin. Um, it's like the, you know, the wrinkle at the top of your eye and like if you have a bag at the bottom of your eye. Um, I'll throw in another edge loop to sort of block that in a little bit. Um, in this case, I might give him like more, a little bit more of an eye bag. Um, sort of play with that. Um, I'll shape maybe the, the outside little brow, um, like that first little mask area I put in. Um, so now, again, just sort of like working your way up to, to having a little bit more geometry in here. Um, so usually for this, uh, I will take that loop and push it way the heck back into the head. Because if this is the crease for the eyeball, I want that to be like an actual nice looking crease. Um, and OK, that might have just been too far. Cough. Um, all right, so I'll just push that back a little bit. Not completely insane. Um, and you can see, again, that he's sort of starting to have more of like an, uh, an eyelid shape take form. Um, so if I go in and add one more edge loop to that, uh, and then I uh, take these and just sort of pull them out a little bit. Um, once I smooth that, I mean, you can see that now he has like pretty much instant eyelids. I'm not saying that these are nice eyelids, but they are eyelids. Um, and then again, I would just sort of like keep, keep working at this. Um, so I'm just going to say, all right, maybe, maybe the corners of his eyes are like a little bit soft. Uh, so I'm just going to go in and um, again, if you want a hard crease, you, need, you still need three edge loops even in organic modeling. Um, usually just end up spreading them out a little bit more so that uh, they're not like wadded on top of all of your other loops. So, dear God. Um, so if, again, if I smooth this, you see that he's like, now he has actual creases in the, in the corner of his, corners of his eye. Um, and he does have some sort of like nice bags under his eye. Um, if I wanted those bags to be more intense, uh, I would need, uh, again, another edge loop. Um, so I'm just going to put an edge loop in kind of like tight to that little original like eyelid hole. And you can see that now he's like super defined eye bag creases, um, which kind of works. Like I don't hate that for the top of his eyes. Um, for the bottom of his eyes, it does feel maybe a little bit extremely <coughs> excessive. Uh, so I'm just going to go in and take those edge loops and just sort of push them away. So, um, and again, it kind of depends what you're doing. Uh, my personal preference with organic modeling is to keep as many uh, lines of like reasonable, I guess, reasonably straight quads as I can. Um, so, like in this case, if I grab these faces, it's still going to make a nice ring around the eye. Like the second I start putting tries and like terminating edge loops really crazy, it's going to start like if I put in an edge loop, it's going to shoot it somewhere weird on the head, which is like super annoying to deal with. Um, so in this case, like if I did want to, um, you know, soften this. Uh, eye bag line, I would just sort of uh, manually push that geometry away uh, rather than getting rid of it because it does it kind of it may, like, makes sense with the edge flow of the head. Um, so I still I still want it there, but it's just sort of softer than it was before. Oh my god. This looks nothing like this teeny. Um, like kind of same like same thing more or less goes for the for the mouth. Um, so in this case I I, I think it's time to give him more of a nose. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and insert an edge loop tool. And I'll just throw in one more edge loop on either side of his nose. Um, so at this point, what I can do is sort of fluff out the, the bridge of his nose a little bit more. Um, all right, what if I back to world mode? Um, so I'll give him like a little bit less lumpy bridge of his nose. Um, and it depends, like it doesn't, I'm just, I'm used to working in wireframe mode. I know like a lot of people hate doing that. Just, again, personal preference. Um, my legs asleep. Um, so when I smooth this, you can see that now he has a uh, much nicer bridge of his nose right in there. Um, and one thing that I noticed, which is like super weird, like when I started doing organic modeling, like the eyes come in, like this little dent in the eyeball always comes in way further than you expect it to. Um, 
but like it makes it like if you look at the profile, like it, it, this looks pretty much like the side of a, a, a human eyeball. It just looks, it's like, you just don't expect it to like push this in so far, but then you just end up doing it. It's like, oh, well that looks better-ish. Um, so again, I'm just gonna kind of like work in his nose a little bit. Um, and then I'm gonna grab this little line here that's sort of defining like that side curvature of his nose and push that down. Uh, and by down, I mean like push it inwards into his face uh, as if you were poking his nose. Um, and you can see that that helps um, significantly to define the actual bridge of his nose. Um, say again? Yep. Um, but yeah, so again, like half of this is literally just sort of like shoving stuff around until it does kind of what you want. Uh, so in this case, I think his nose is really square and horrible, and I'm just gonna see what happens if I do uh, an edit mesh average vertices on those faces. Eh, kind of nothing great, but oh god. But actually, um, <laughs> all faces start out as Voldemort. Um, but yeah, so I mean, you know, you can you can sort of see hopefully that he's becoming a face. Um, so at this point, um, I'm I'm probably just gonna like add in a few more loops and just kind of like uh, shut this madness down because uh, there's other stuff I want to show you guys. But um, this is actually kind of an interesting point. Um, um, where you can see, so like when I, when I toggle back and forth between um, unsmoothed versus smoothed, um, same thing that happens in a lot of the uh, hard models that you guys have been doing uh, is happening here. So uh, in this case, on his unnecessarily square nose, um, you can see that it's sort of pulling down into the rest of his mouth when I smooth this, um, which isn't so much what I want. Um, so Again, this is pretty much fixing this is just a matter of more or less adding more edge loops. Um, one thing that would actually help dramatically is if I gave him another loop on his nose. Because um, then it, ooh, hello. Because um, then I can go in and sort of give him some like flared nostrils. Um, and then I'm just going to grab these loops here and just sort of be like, ah ha ha, actual nostrils. Let me give you, let me give you some real person nostrils. Mm. Um, well, that's amazing looking. Um, but anywho, so I mean that that kind of helps a little bit with the pulling there. But there's still like if you if you zoom in, you can still see there's like a little bit of, like weird pulling, stretching kind of here. Um, so again, that's something that I can fix with more edge loops. So if I throw in an edge loop like somewhere under here, um, you can see that that actually pretty much eliminates that pulling. Um, if I had any pulling like on the side of his nose, like there's usually some right in here, um, I can again throw in an edge loop and sort of like pop that right in his eye. It's gonna carry all the way down to his mouth. Um, and then I can go in and it both fixes, uh, it fixes any pulling that's there, but it also gives me more geometry to work with where I can like pull out his face um, and make that little nose, like nasolabial fold thing a little bit puffier. Um, and then just puff out his entire face because he looks like he hasn't eaten in three years. Um, but. Yeah, and then again, you just sort of like keep shaping. So like around the mouth, um, a lot of times I'll just sort of go in and be like, aha, amazing. Just sort of keep poking stuff in here. Um, so mouths are a lot of times like they deform. If you're animating, um, they deform a lot. So you usually do need more loops around the mouth um, just to like help define that shape and give you more to work with when you are animating. Um, otherwise, you can end up with stuff that looks kind of low res. It's like a little bit hard to uh, manipulate. Um, ah, yes, this is better. Yes. Real person face, sort of. Um, and you just kind of like keep, again, just keep pulling stuff around. It's not, half of organic modeling is just like fiddling with shape and like just pulling things around until they look less horrifying. Um, so in this case, I was getting some like hard lines on his jaw, so I'm like, cool, what if I just sort of squint? Oh my god. He looks so sad. Looks like he's in pain. Um, but anywho, and at some point, like you can go in. Um, and like throw in some nostrils into his, into his nose if you wanted to, um, but I think this is like pretty much, pretty much all the demoing necessary for a face more or less. Um, so like this would definitely benefit from like obviously more shaping of the nose. Um, a few more edge loops in here would help me um, define the shape of his jaw and like the the curvature of his mouth, uh, this area and that little like philatrum, that little like nub between your lips and your nose. Um, but again, like I think this is pretty much, pretty much gets the point across for a face, hopefully. Um, 
So any questions about face things? This is more sort of, sort of like a weird demo, but you have angered the scene. Oh my god. Um, I love playing. Eyebrows are like one of the most expressive things. Like if you if you have to choose to put like one thing on an inanimate object to give it expression, like put on eyebrows. Um, like so much expression so easily. Um, and then again, sort of like as you work, I usually go and like smooth in the back of the head because it like gets really pointy and achy. But that's more or less like creepy head model in like 20 minutes. Um, so I'm not sure. So um, someone I someone suggested they wanted to do a whole figure. I'm not sure which section that was. Um, is that something that you guys have interest in? Yes. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to heaven help the poor figure that's about to get made, but I'm going to just sort of not work from reference while I do this. Um, so if you guys do need to add a figure, I'll just show you like the really basic geometry you need to get something like kind of ugly that would like animate reasonably well-ish. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is again just start with a cube. Um, I do I do love a good cube, um, and I'm just going to start with again just sort of one sub div on each each side of this. Um, I'll set it back to zero zero zero, and be like, great, this is my torso. Um, and I'm, I'm not going to work off the scene because I don't want to. Um, so the first thing I personally usually do is I'll just, again, just sort of go in and like very lightly, um, like ever so slightly round this out just so I need to do a little bit less to it later. Um, so I'm actually going to start, uh, just start off the bat and add a few more edge loops than I had last time. So I'm just going to throw pretty much a loop front to back on this body. Um, and then I'll say here is maybe going to be like the bottom-ish of this guy's chest. Um, yeah, cool. Um, and then I'm just going to start almost immediately, just sort of like start shape. Wait, hang on. There's like there's a specific shoulder. Shoulders are really annoying to animate, and I always forget the the geometry from off the top of my head. So, um, all right. So I'm going to throw in one more edge loop this. Um, and then what I'm going to do is, so there's like a specific patch. So, and this is just sort of like the, the topology, again, that I learned in organic modeling. Um, so I'm just sort of like hijacking that from, from my previous class. Um, but for the shoulders, like what I'm going to do is, um, the goal is to basically, like if you're looking at the top of the body, um, to have a shape that looks kind of like this, where you have like one edge loop that would more or less, like if this was an actual figure, I pull up a picture of an actual figure. Um, I don't know what this is going to go. Google. All right. Uh, all right. So if you had something like this, I guess this would be the most specific. Um, I could have found a picture of Armstrong from Full Metal Alchemist, but I didn't think of that. Um, all right. So, um, so the goal of this is to basically have like this whole uh, sort of like pectoral shoulder muscle area, um, you'd have a loop running around that entire thing. So that's going to help um, with deformations of the shoulder and also to define um, whatever crease you have at the bottom of the pec. Um, yeah, weird class. Anyway, um, so that's pretty much what I've done. I've just sort of like added an extra edge loop in there and sort of um, shoved things around a little bit. So you can see if I sort of select this lower loop in here um, that it's it's Imagine that this is going somewhere that looks more like a shoulder. Um, but what I'm going to do is take um, these little chunks of loops here. Um, so like this is going to be the back of the shoulder blade. Um, this is going to be the pec. And I'm just going to basically select those little patches on both sides of the body and extrude them, pull them in slightly, and maybe like push them out slightly. Um, and you can see, I'm not saying that this is a nice looking figure. But you can see that you do start to have a little bit of that um, geometry being defined for like that pec region. Um, and then if I shifted some of these faces over a little bit, um, you can see that it might start kind of like, again, going up over the shoulder, um, which is kind of the goal of uh, what I'm trying to do here. Um, and I'll probably need to edit this a little bit in a second. But um, so I'm just going to. Real quick, just go in and like throw in sort of another loop, um, and 
shape this a tiny bit because it's super creepy looking. Um, I don't know. This is what happens when I don't model off reference. It just gets like really bizarre really quickly. Um, and you kind of like shape the uh, the neck area. Usually, what I end up doing is just sort of like taking. I'll just sort of like grab this top area here and just like extrude it. Extrude it. What are you doing? My eyes going nuts. All right. Um, just sort of like pull that up a little bit, and it starts becoming something neck-like. Um, and again, I'm not going to go super crazy into shaping this because um, I'm not. But making so if you if you wanted to add like abs into this person, um, that's actually kind of a similar thing to adding in. Um, Pretty much like the nose or like any other like major feature in your mouth or in your in your face. Um, so you just want to go in and do uh, just throw in an edge loop tool like right under those like weird pecs that I've just made. Um, and this one I'm gonna shape a little bit. So let me see let me see how my weird muscly dude shows up. Not terribly well. Um, all right. All right. All right. Well, you can see it's sort of like drawn in where the rib cage is here a little bit. Um, and you're going to basically define that in the same way that you made the mouth. We're just going to like take some faces and extrude them in. Um, but it's good to have a little bit of geometry, like again, sort of defining where the top of that rib cage is going to be. Um, so in this case, I'm just going to make that uh, this new loop that I've sort of added in here. Um, and that is something that like it doesn't really need to come up like right under the armpits um, and like all the way under the arms. So I'm just going like, to kind of pull that down a bit. Um, and now you have something that like maybe looks sort of rib cagey ish. Um, at which point I might kind of go in and do like a little shaping to the bottom here. Um, and then you can sort of grab this here. Uh, and again, just like every time. Uh, again, just sort of extrude that, um, scale the whole thing in. Then if you like push that out, uh, you have something that starts to look vaguely like abs, uh, with an emphasis on vaguely. Um, yeah, so again, kind of creepy, but um, and then usually, like, so at this point, I would usually go in and just be like, aha, death to the leg holes, um, and literally just like remove, remove some faces from the bottom, uh, where the leg holes are going to be. So, what this, what this ends up looking like is going to be more or less like a women's one piece swimsuit in terms of like the shape of the torso before you add legs. Um, so you know, like pull the leg, pull the leg holes up like this going to look really awkward. Um, I'm just going to sort of pull, again, like pull this down, maybe pull this down a little bit. Just sort of shaping things as I go, hoping to get it like a little bit more natural-ish looking-ish. Um, and you can see that now we have a very awkward, uh, muscly swimsuit, question mark. Um, so getting the arms in is like always something that kind of annoys me. But basically the main thing for your body is, again, um, it is good to have like this little loop of stuff that wraps right around the pecs. So again, if I click on this and then double click to select a loop, um, you can see that it's pretty much making this nice, um, weird. Um, it's making this nice like perfect ring around uh, around the pectorals there, um, which again is going to help with deformations later, uh, should you choose to do stuff. And to do that again, I sort of grabbed those faces and extruded them. Oh, that shrieking noise is so bad. Um, it's, it's literally been doing that since I was in college. Like, I, they really need to end this. Um, but anyway, so I'm just going to go in and kind of um, keep adding loops. At this point, I'm going to try to get some arms in there, because um, I feel like arms would be decent looking. Um, so I'm just going to kind of throw in a loop there and maybe here. And uh, what if I just draw those in? Um, all right, so I'm just going to go into my multi-cut tool. I had a change of heart. And I'm just going to multi-cut in like a very awkward hole, which I'm going to make nicer later, uh, where I am going to basically rip arms out of this character's body. Um, all nice and all nice and gentle-like. Um, so again, this is going to be my very awkward armhole. Um, so I'm just going to, I don't know, I like working without the faces there, so I just sort of deleted them. Um, I'm going to take this and just extrude it out a little bit. That looks awkward. And you can see that now I kind of start to have something that maybe resembles arms on some planet other than this one. Um, uh, you know, usually when I get the arms in, I'll sort of start shaping the shoulders a little more. 
Um, I find it like hard to work on the shoulders without doing the arms. But um, so if I wanted to like extrude that out, um, oh my. All right. So this is, I'm going to show you really quick, um, more or less like the simplest arms that you can possibly make. Um, so for elbows, I'm just going to like drop a loop where the, the elbows are going to be and be like, cool. This is like literally the simplest arm you can make. Uh, it is not going to deform well. Um, so if I like took this edge loop and I shifted the pivot down, so this is like just a me imagining that like I'm bending this from the elbow. Um, right? Right? Like this doesn't look nice at all. Um, <laughs> if I if I unsmooth this, you can see that it's like ripping itself apart. Like the only reason that this looks halfway decent is because it's smoothed. If this is a low poly game mesh, no. Um, so I'm just going to undo that and bend that back to whatever I had before that wasn't that. Um, so again, the same thing where like if you need three edge loops to uh, to define a hard corner in hard modeling, um, if you're going to have something like an area like an elbow or something that's going to bend, uh, you need at least three loops to define the especially like that little crease on the inside of the arm where the bend is. Um, so this was probably going to be like super weird when I demo this. But um, so I'm just going to throw in an edge loop on each side of this and say, cool. My personal preference is to make like, to take that little loop and be like, boop. And then you have something that looks vaguely elbow-ish, sort of. Um, and just like as a weird thing, in case you guys have never noticed, so your elbows and kneecaps both move with like, they don't stay centered in like, between the top and bottom of your arm. Like your elbow pretty much follows along with the, the lower section of your arm, or no. Sorry, the elbow follows along with like the top section of your arm, and the knee goes with the lower section of the leg, I think. Unless I'm going crazy. It's weird. Um, but I was going to throw in like a very, very ugly extrusion and be like, wow, that's a, that is a good looking elbow right there. Ew. Um, so you can see, hopefully, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see what happens if I try to select this and just do like a soft select on this. I don't entirely know how this is going to work, because I don't usually soft select when I model this stuff. But so here's like my new selection, and I'm going to try bending this now. Uh, and you can see that it does look significantly less gross than it did 10 seconds ago. Um, even if I unsmooth, it's, it's not the best thing ever. Um, but you can see that it is at least you know, not crushing the entire arm in on itself. Um, and when you smooth it, um, it does sort of start to get that nice little like crease for like creasy skin. This is very creepy from this particular angle. Like just overall, can we talk about this for a moment or like never ever speak of this again? Um, yeah, I don't know what the heck, I really want to like use this face for something. If I was teaching for, if I was teaching you guys, yeah. It kind of looks like the, I can't see, the super blind. Oh my god, it does. <laughs> That's uncomfortable. Uh, <laughs> amazing. Um, but honestly, I think if I were teaching you guys for Halloween, I legitimately would 3D print this head and put it on my face and wear it in the class. Um, which I actually did when I, the first quarter I taught. I came in in a creepy mask and scared the crap out of people. Um, but anywho, so again, three edge loops. Um, anywhere where you're having a lot of bending, like the knees, um, shoulders, you can pretty much get away with at least three loops, and that'll hold up more or less for game meshes, stuff like that. Um, so for the legs, it's going to be a similar deal. I'm just going to take these um, weird loops that I sort of chopped out of his body, um, and I will just sort of crush them down. So for legs, um, a lot of times I'll sort of start and I'll just like flatten, flatten the loops a little bit, um, and then like pull. I always end up having to pull in these little uh, like leg lumps here to sort of thin in the crotch area between his legs. Um, and so I'm just going to run through real quick, um, just extrude that down. So again, if you, again, if you want knees, um, you're going to need, this is so ugly, um, you're going to need three edge loops for them. So like one at the top, one in the middle, one in the bottom, um, and then one for some giant muscly calves or something. Um, Scale that down and just be like, cool. So here's some like really ugly legs. Um, yeah, I didn't. I didn't promise this would be a gorgeous model when I started making this. Um, but you can see that it's sort of like becoming more human shaped. Um, 
sort of. <laughs> oh God. Um, <laughs> I'm not entirely sure which context you meant that, if it was a compliment or not. Um, this is just creepy, but um, wow, this is incredibly uncomfortable. Um, so if you guys, and this is, so if you guys are ever modeling anything, um, particularly like, I guess there's like two more things I really want to go over. One of them is how to model butts. Um, I can't think of a weird, like less weird way to say that. Um, but it's not what what you don't want to do is like take these faces and extrude them out. <laughs> um, it doesn't make a nice effect. It doesn't necessarily deform terribly well. So this reminds me a lot of King of the Hill. Um, that was an amazing pun. Um, so what you actually want to do is basically uh, go in and like add additional edge loops and then uh, just sort of like start pulling them out and shaping them. Um, and this is what this is going to allow you to do is um, have a little First of all, a little bit more to work with uh, in terms of geometry in the hip area. Um, and then it's also just going to allow you to get like a lot smoother transition uh, here. Um, God help me. What am I showing you guys right now? Um, but again, so you just like kind of keep pulling stuff. And this is going to deform a lot nicer. So like, you know, when you're moving your legs, um, this is something that you're going to expect to probably curve down like fairly aggressively, like it needs to stretch well. Um, so it is good to avoid stars, and by not extruding the butt, you can avoid stars. Um, so again, I don't promise this is going to be like super nice looking. Um, but this is like, you know, you can start out with something kind of like this. Um, maybe, and then kind of like flatten these. Um, just kind of like winging it right now a little bit. Uh, and then just like, again, if I throw in another loop here, uh, maybe another loop here, um, you can see that it, it looks a little bit nicer. And then you just sort of have to go in and like smush things together like in here. This is always like the weird, it's like, this is, I think, easier to do with game meshes uh, than it is actual animation meshes. But uh, that is more or less how you would do the buttocks. Um, yeah, all right. I didn't, I didn't think through like, this part of the lecture in particular before I came in, and now I'm just like, what am I doing right now? Um, all right. Um, the other thing that's like actually important that a lot of people tend to do kind of weird um, is feet. Um, and my symmetry is making me sad right now. All right. Um, so when you guys are doing feet, um, it might seem like the logical thing to do to like um, go in. So I'm just going to like extrude down. And sort of like make you know like a little like sock shape almost for the feet like this, um, but this is actually <coughs> gonna be incredibly hard to work with um, when you actually need to to like animate and model this. So um, rather than making what I call sock feet, where again you just sort of like extrude it out. Like if I if I double click on the leg, you can see that that loop runs all the way up his body, and then like it. Instead of like just sort of stopping at the ground, it like turns into his foot. Um, instead of having that, um, what you actually want to do is just take the bottom of his leg, shoot it down to the ground, and then grab. Oh lordy! Um, incidentally, uh, what happened here is that my symmetry went kind of started eating geometry from from the wrong places. Um, so at this point, uh, once you've just extruded straight down, you can grab all of the faces on the front of this foot. Um, and it would be better to like actually shape the, the geometry uh, before doing this. But just grab those uh, and extrude them uh, straight out like this. Like, OK. Extrude them straight out like this. Um, so at this point, what you have is if you double click on that loop running on the leg, um, it goes straight up the leg, and then it pretty much stops at the ground. Um, and when you smooth it, it's, uh, you know, it, it holds the shape of a foot a little bit more. Um, you have a better, better positioning, like at the ankle. Um, I'm just gonna be. This is like a achy way to terminate this, but uh, I'm just gonna turn that into a star. Um, so normally you would fill the bottom of the foot with quads and like connect it back up so it like goes nicely up the leg, etc. But I don't want to do that right now. 
Um, but basically what this will allow you to do is um, you can go in and insert, okay? Um, so you can throw one loop in like right above that ankle line and one line or one loop right down in here. Um, and that's going to allow you to have a nice crisp right at the beginning of the ankle if you need it. Um, just make sure my mic is attached. Um, and then you also still get a reasonable amount of geometry uh, at the back of the leg uh, if you add in like one more loop like this. Um, and you could just you know sort of go in, keep shaping the foot, um, add some loops for the balls of the uh, ball of the foot, etc. Um, yeah, shush. <laughs> I know what I accidentally just said. Um, anyway, um, but yeah, so that's like more or less. Oh my god. <laughs> An excellent example of like half of organic modeling is just shaping things better than this. Um, yeah, I don't think I could like legitimately get a whole model off in like a class. It, like, I could maybe model like a decent looking head, but not a whole body and a head and just, but you get the point. So like a lot of this is just like adding more loops and like, you know, shaping this area in here. You could um, add in abs if you wanted to. Um, and just like sort of not, not abandoning your model at this stage goes a long way to like making it look better. Um, that being said, I'm going to totally abandon the model at this stage. Um, does anybody have any questions on what I've done here or like anything about like the edge loops or anything like that? All right. Um, so this is, a, oh God, this is so uncomfortable. <laughs> um, so at this point, would you guys rather do um, a little bit of rigging? Like I could show you, yeah. Yes, I will fix this because <laughs> it is deeply uncomfortable. Actually, everything about this is deeply uncomfortable. Oh God, that's not better. That's not better. <laughs> this is what happens. I have like no concept of the proportions of a human body at all. Um, so the fact that this even looks like a person is like impressive. Um, I'm, I'm terrible without orthographics for like actual body proportions. Anyway, um, so would you guys rather do completely unrelated segue into like how to make a weapon or I can show you guys how to pose this monstrosity with a basic rig? All right. 